Assalamu alaikum, good evening and welcome dear viewers. Welcome to Catering Circle's Restaurant Star Show 2022. This is the episode four. For the last two seasons, Catering Circle have held the Creative Talents competitions successfully, working very hard to find that perfect star restauranter, shall we say. Around 80 participants took part out of the 80, 20 were found and 10 were crowned as winners at this year's Business Conference 2022. The 10 finalists have participated in the Restaurant Star Show. Today, we have six semi-finalists, from which three will go to the finals next month. But before, let's see a recap of episode three. Assalamualaikum, good evening and welcome viewers to Catering Circles. The name Azuba is an exotic name which means to wonder. To pack an amazing punch to really hit every single taste bud on your tongue. Started thinking about the dish, we wanted to make it so that it's simple, it's fast, so you can produce it quickly. Three dishes are very unique, uh, I haven't seen them at any of the Indian restaurant to be honest. I've never actually seen such a kind of um, variance and from my usual trip to um, the Indian restaurants etc and Asian restaurants, you don't really see these on the menu so I'm very excited about the, um, about the variety being offered. It's a very new and very you know, innovative dish. You know. Sometimes the king prawn shortage, when the king prawn is shortage we are in trouble. I'd like to um, ask our mentor that's joined us by video link. I do think that their, their cooking methods and how they're putting things together is really really interesting. All three products made without gravy which is it's innovative. I'm sure these three dishes take our industry further. And salmon harissa guala, I taste it. It's really yummy sauce. Our seasonal menu, whatever gets um, glowing responses, they stay on our menu. The richness of the flavours keeps you enthralled as you eat and continue to go eating. You would only have to taste it to believe me. So I will invite everybody. To have our own customers that come into the restaurant, they take pictures on Instagram, Snapchat. We'd go around to every customer and just start talking to them. Present it to them, especially when they're having a party share. To market a dish, I would do it quite differently. I would like to, I was expecting to see a specific dish launch, maybe a menu change. Congratulations, Viceroy of India, for winning this round. Thank you, Catering Circle, for putting the platform for young restaurateurs to have this opportunity. Well, wasn't that exciting? It was, it's been a very exciting so far. Well, before we go on to round one, I'd like to introduce our judges, our special judges. So I'm going to start off with introducing our panel judges on my right. And they are very familiar and friends of Catering Circle. I'd like to first introduce on my first right, Ahmed Samad Chowdhury, JP. He's the chairman of Channel S Television, chief advisor to say Catering Circle. As one of the pioneers in the curry sector, he played a key role in changing British dining habits. Welcome to Catering Circle. Salam alaikum. Second, I would like to introduce our lovely Julia Erdel, chief chef, educator, a regular judge for many food awards, including the free, free form sector, and is always looking at ways to adapt menus in this very evolving market of allergen-free cooking and healthy eating, as well as has made few TV appearances under her a apron for BBC One and Channel Four. Welcome, Hulia. It's really nice to see you again. Our third panel judge, Shahagir Bakht Farooq. He is ex-president of BBCCI, the first Bangladeshi trainer who provides food hygiene training, health and safety training, and HACCP training. Accredited trainer of the CIEH, RSPH, MLC, and welcome host. Welcome, Shank. Bye. Welcome. Thank you. Now, going on to our special judges, I'd like to introduce Abdul Kashim on my left. Welcome. Abdul Kashim is a finalist of Restaurant Star Show Awards 2018, Winner Catering Circle Season 2, Restaurant Talent Show Awards 2017, 
and owner Chili Bar and Kitchen, Hertfordshire, and a very successful businessman. Welcome. Next, I'd like to introduce Amina Chowdhury on my um, left. She is Director of Dentistry, um, First Class European Standards Dental Clinic in Selet, Bangladesh. Um, she also uh, raises much charity for organisations and many causes, and also works for YMCA Bedfordshire, and also a former member of Board of Directors of NRB Women's Investments. Welcome, Amina. It's always nice to see you too. Next, I'd like to introduce Aisha Chowdhury. She is ex scrutiny Commission Chair, Health and, Adult, Health and Adult Social Care, previously Mayor's Advisor and Community Lead Councillor for Beckton in the London Borough of Newham. Welcome. Welcome, Aisha Chowdhury. Next, I'd like to introduce Minhaj Kibria. I'm sure you all know this gentleman. He's a TV ad maker and filmmaker. Minaj has been in television advertising business for over 20 years. He has created many hit TV commercials, many that we remember, and he has written, directed, and produced three feature films. Welcome, Minaj Kabria. Welcome to the show. Great. Next, I'd like to introduce our wonderful mentors. Some are very familiar faces and friendly faces. First, I'd like to introduce the lovely Halal Malik on my left. Welcome. He is the executive member of Catering Circle and a very successful businessman in the catering sector. Next, I would like to introduce Ziaro Chowdhury. Welcome. He is the winner of Restaurant Star Show and Restaurant Star Talent Show Awards and the owner of Montaz, a new market and a very successful businessman in the catering sector. Next, a friendly face and a wonderful gentleman, Tafa Zulmia. Welcome. <laughs> He is executive member of the Catering Circle and Secretary General of BBCA. He is one of the finalists of the Restaurant Star Show Awards 2018 and winner of the Restaurant Talent Show Awards 2017. Also, the owner of Bailiff in London. Thank Welcome. You. Thank you. Also, we have a lovely lady. She joined us in the last episode and this time she'll be joining us via Zoom. Welcoming the lovely Shahina Ali. Celebrity chef, TV and radio food expert, nutropath, nutritionist, businesswoman, and food and beauty writer. She is also a BBC expert on nutrition, natural, and herbal medicine. Welcome, Shahina Ali. Welcome to the studio again. I'd like to, last but not least, uh, another wonderful, lovely gentleman who was, oh, I'm always happy to see, Sabir Karim. <laughs> Best Asian and Oriental Chef of the Year 2012 and 2013. Sabri Karim has combined his job of flying all over the world as a British Airways purser his, and has a love of Indian cuisine, resulting in two award-winning UK restaurants. He's, he's also had over 20 years career in British Airways as cabin crew. Welcome, yeah. Sabri Karim. Welcome. I'm going to describe the scoring. Panel judges get 20% each of the votes, and our special judges will be voting 10% to each. So now, let's go to round one. Right. Tonight, we have six semi-finalists, so let's see who they are. some wonderful semi-finalists. Before we go on to see some snapshots, this cook-off was held on Tuesday last week. And it was held at the West London College, where apprentices from the college also learned how to cook these amazing dishes. 
our six semi-finalists were judged by lecturers, four culinary lecturers from the college, giving scores. And the whole process was, rec was recorded. So let's see some snapshots. As you can see, today we are uh, recording the Catering Circle semi-final cook-off training. We have six students all together and they will be fully trained from six different participants. Uh, we have mentor here today, we have uh, judges, chef judges to judge. Today the dishes are very creative, the industry need those trend-setting dishes to survive and make maximum GP and the Catering Circle program will show the full life cycle. We've shown how to do the uh, recipe, we're now showing the training and then the final we're going to show how to launch the product, uh, the dish itself. Judge Shave, Amra Soita dish um, presentation for Sitara. Be honest with you, as a judge, I'm a little confused as some extra thing. Nice presentation, beautiful taste. It's very nice. It's still moist, tender. Yeah, it's the best working on each dish and they're being tutored in some way by the chefs of each of the almond teas and um, what they're trying to do is really sort of duplicate or um, uh, find ways of making the dish easier to make and be able to replicate it without any prior knowledge. I think something that's really really interesting is that each training has a little um, uh, method of trying to make it easier but the chefs are really able to help them uh, in a really um, convenient way and I think that's really really useful. Well, wasn't that really exciting? I'm sure it was. I'd like to ask Tafas or Mia, tell me a bit about how this, how the cook-off went. Yes, yeah. definitely. Well, it was very challenging, uh, but it's very interesting because you could literally see how the chefs were cooking from start to finish. And I think the judges and uh, the student with them was very... In, uh, finding it uh, very, ex they were excited and at the same time challenging because they were learning as they were going and their feedback was very good as well. Now the important thing is making a dish which can make a difference and make a big impact. And all the six chefs were trying their best and I think they've done an extremely uh, great job. Halal Malik, your experience. Thanks, Megna. Um, on the day, obviously, um, it was really good to see the students actually engage with the with professional chefs and their excitement in their eyes and they had fire in their belly. And they were asking lots of questions and they were actually interested in what they were actually doing. That's what I found really exciting for them. And to be able to actually make something from scratch and like you said earlier on, with no pre-knowledge is really a big challenge. And they actually did really well in that challenge. So yeah, really proud of every single student and the, stu and the actual chefs themselves. They were so friendly and engaging, so well done all the chefs, really, really good. Sabir Karim, your experience? I think the team, uh, the, both the students uh, and the chefs, the, the chefs who are uh, teaching them was uh, amazing. Um, this, this, the students picked up from, especially um, as uh, Hela Malik said, uh, without free knowledge and, uh, and all the food uh, cooking from the scratch was a great experience for the students uh, and the judges were amused and confused because all the dishes were just simply amazing. So it was a great experience uh, for everybody. Well done, Shadim. Sierra Chowdhury, your experience. Yeah, so, um, yeah, no, it was a wonderful day. And I think uh, the important bit is that, uh, and I've experienced this before as well, that our Indian cookery doesn't get into these colleges and the students get don't get to see these spices and how all this sort of development works. So it was great to see, like, completely sort of there was no non-Asian sort of yeah. background students there and then the culinary expertise of the uh, Indian spices and that so the knowledge that kind of went through 
was ex um, portrayed extremely well. Did yeah. the students, um, the apprentices that joined, did they find it quite difficult or did they find it easy to follow instructions no, from our chefs? No, I, I think they found it quite easy because I think a lot of the, uh, the sort of chefs now as well are trying to sort of take back ingredients and not... You know, we, we use a lot of spices and a lot of ingredients and uh, what they did was, you know, cut down on the ingredients so it was easier for them to pick up different things and stuff like that. So I think the experience was good from both sides, yeah, definitely. Well, thank you. Thank you, mentors. Thank you. Thank you. I will come back to you a little bit later on. I'd like to ask our panel judges, um, I'd like to ask Julio, what do you expect from today? What are you expecting from today's episode? Um, lots of creativity, I think. Lots of creativity, ingredients, maybe thinking out of the box a little bit. I'd like to see some more sort of healthier style foods in there as well. Um, lots of modern flavours and, and, and your clever use of the ingredient. Lots of colours and balance and textures, you know. That's really what I always go for with my students as well. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And yourself, Samadpe? You know, these, uh, all the dishes are unusual, no doubt about it. And they looked good. So... Um, we want to see that um, the three winners okay. today uh, can um, provide something uh, for the um, customers in their uh, restaurants and also followed by other restaurants, uh, the same dishes, and they become very popular. Yourself, Shakir Bhai, what are you expecting from today's episode? I think the, the slot which I just saw here, I think the six young caterers they have taken our culture as a, in terms of uh, food to the foreigners and they have uh, mixed up with the other people, transferred the knowledge from each other, learned from each other, and that was a good networking event as well. So it's not only about the food, but it's all about culture as well, our tradition, our history, our heritage, our trade, our tradition. So everything was there. So I congratulate all of them. Thank you. Fantastic. Now to our special judges. Minaj Kabria, what, what are you expecting from today's episode? The food to be, of course, um, looking nice and presentable. A lot of colours, as um, the uh, lady over there um, put it. And, uh, of course, it has to be tasty. Aisha Chowdhury. When we talk about catering industry, I think crisis, difficulties, these sort of issues um, comes in mind. But it's really nice to see um, so many young people, young businessmen in front of us. And they are not only just making money or um, doing something for themselves, but I think they're promoting the culture, the heritage, um, not only within the Bangladeshi community, but outside the community as well. And I'm really proud to see what we have just seen. And I'm looking forward to see more of it. Um, I'm really um, pleased to see young people are getting interested in the participation of students. It was something amazing. I did not expect it to see that. Um, so it's really nice that they, they, um, they are encouraged uh, to be part of it, part of the um, catering industry, I should say. So yeah, I'm looking forward to um, listen to the contestants and see where they go. Thank you. Best Amina wishes Chaudhry. in advance. Thank you. Thank you, Aisha Chaudhry. Thank you for having me. Uh, I'm actually happy to be here. But listening to everyone, they've actually covered everything that I wanted to say. But I'm just happy to be here and let the best contestants win. Yeah, uh, thank you for having me here. Um, I think uh, the four, um, or the six, I should say, I was going from there, the four. But obviously, they're top of their game uh, to be in the semi-finals. That they are good at what they do. Um, what I'd like to see today is these dishes sound all interesting, but are they practical in a busy kitchen environment? That'll be what I'd like to see and hear yes. from these chaps. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much, Abdul Kashim. Thank you. Um, some very valid um, comments and expectations from um, all our panel judges and um, special judges. Thank you so much. And thank you to our mentors. I think the scores are ready. These are the results from the cook-off and training at the college. The results go as Taj Tanduri have 94, Viceroy of Windsor, 87, Shoreditch Fish and Chips have 80, India India Witten, 77, Panchi Indian Street Kitchen, 62, and Mahdi Lounge, 75. Now we're in round two. 
recipe and training. So let's see how the salmon and calamari has been cooked. Hi, uh, we are we just explained to the young lady for everything what we're doing, and she's interested. She and she said uh, everything is very easy and simple. That's what we show her. So Tina, who was talking about, she was very interested why we smoke it, and she found it quite a unique dish. But the most important thing, it was very simple and fast. It was efficient. Tina, we're going to do oak wood fire smoked salmon and calamari. So we're going to smoke the salmon first. We use oak wood to smoke it. It gives it a smoky flavour and it gives it a lovely shelf life as well. But before we put it in the smoker, we sprinkle it with sea salt all over. So the sea salt goes all over and that will lock in the juice uh, for the salmon when it gets smoked. And then we're going to cut a piece for the smoker to go in and then we'll light up the oak wood. And then we'll take it to the smoker now. So what we'll do, we've got wood in here as well. For this purpose, we use this one easier. And what that will do, will give it a smoky flavour all over the salmon. And also about 180, 200 degrees will go for. And it will retain the juices, give you a longer shelf life as well. And then if you have a quick check on it, you'll see that the salmon getting smoked as well on it. We put a bit of buttermilk on the salmon and then we wrap out the foil, ready to go into the food. And what kind of butter is this? It's uh, made with buttermilk. Okay. It's much more healthy than normal butter. We just melt it. So we won't put too much, so, yeah. and then we just layer it on top. It will give it a little super flavor. And it will give it a bit more moisture. So now we're making the calamari ring. So just one ring, and what we do is we coat it in milk dip. Yeah, we'll put it in the dip. So this basically gets the panko crumb to stick together, and it'll give you that crunchy. And now, put here, and put it here. And then some panko crumbs there now. We've got the calamari ring, then we give strips of calamari, which is cut in a different way, and it's seen as a very fresh cup of calamari, which you won't get in many places. And why do you do two different types of calamari? So the reason why we do this, this is like the panko crumb, it's got a coating on it, and this is, as it comes, it's seen as more fresher. You won't get this anywhere else, but the whole, it's a USP. Okay. So we will, hopefully one day as a chef, you'll have your own restaurant. Yes. When you have something different, you'll see, you get And you then you put it in the flour. Yeah. And then it's going to fry. salmon with calamari it was really good I enjoyed the experience um, I used to smoke it for the first time to smoke the salmon apparently this is a good way to preserve the fish so far the experience has been educational and I'm having fun like to ask our contestant one, Joshim Hussein of Shoreditch Fish and Chips. Please tell me about the recipe and cooking method for your dish. You have two minutes. Salaam alaikum everyone. Salaam. The ingredients is uh, minimal and very simple, giving us a low budget to the as purchase cost. So we use sea salt crystals, which is unprocessed, extra virgin olive oil on the dressing, uh, which is incredibly healthy. The seasoned salad uh, includes um, leafy greens, various leafy greens like rockets. And with the seasoned salad, depending on how the system is set up, um, there's no VAT on the uh, salad itself. Uh, for the main produce, uh, salmon is always at the top of the list of the healthiest fishes to eat. Uh, we smoke the salmon in oak wood. Again, depending on how the system is set up, um, smoked salmon, there's no VAT on that, it's non-vatable. Um, 
It's a universal taste bud for the majority of the mass market. Salmon is shelved in abundance um, in the majority of all outlets. Um, salmon, sorry, calamari is uh, dipped in panko and meal dip. And the calamari is given in a small portion, giving us a 94% gross margin, uh, which is phenomenal. All the produce are easily and readily available all year round. Um, locally, it's sustainable and easily farmed um, compared to certain other dishes. The cooking method is not the item itself which is unique, it's what we do with it. I mean, we can all have the same type of meat, but it's what we do with it which will differentiate us from the competitors and give us a USP. Um, we smoke the salmon for 30 minutes in the smoker with oak wood. The pre-prep time gives us a head start in service and it gives a longer shelf life to the produce and a distinct smoke taste. Yeah, like 40 a, seconds, Josh. Like a barbecue taste. Um, then it's finished off in the grill in eight minutes. Um, the use of technology is essential in the kitchen area, so we use a flat electric griddle. What that does, it retains the juices and is efficient in keeping um, constant temperature levels. Um, the whole method is very energy efficient. There's no gas usage required, as you can see. And then it's on to plating. The presentation has to be Instagrammable um, with a gimmick. So it entices people to use it as a showpiece, first impressions, everything. And um, what the brother with the okay. mackerel did with the gimmick, with the Joshua, tin. I've got to stop you oh, there. Fine. That was a wonderful finish there. Yeah, no, thank, thank you. you. Sorry, like two to minutes. Go back and sit down. Very interesting um, method of um, cooking and very sounds tasty as well. So now let's see how the mackerel three ways. I made a uh, mackerel three ways, which is basically uh, celebrating, uh, celebrating like uh, our traditional Bengali dishes. So we did like a mas bora, a mas biran, and a mas bazi in a, like a warm mackerel salad. So it's like the three bees, the three bazis. So today we're doing uh, mackerel three ways, and these are Bangladeshi cooking techniques that we're using to cook. Basically, we're going to have a warm mackerel salad, and then we're going to have a mackerel fish cake, and then a pan-fried mackerel. And then to accompany it, we're going to have like a tomato soup and some other little bits and pieces. So we're going to start off with the tomato soup, the one that takes the longest, just like a, just like a couple of two, three tablespoons of oil, nothing much. And um, and this has what we do. This is a fenugreek seed, so it's a herb. It's like a what this does is it just just flavors the oil a little bit once the oil gets going as you can see like there's the uh, fenugreek seed we just need it to just flavor the oil a little bit so now what we're going to do this is all just sort of by eye we're just going to add the onions basically this just is, just needs to sweat down a little so um, while that's happening we're going to move on to like pan fried fish. At the bottom there's going to be um, a little uh, masala with some onions and some peppers as well. So yeah, we're going to need that. That's salt. So the, we've cut the onions in two separate ways. So for the tomato soup, it's going to be, it's just, uh, we both oil into there. Yeah, so just in case we just want to coat maybe one more. Just gonna wait for it to warm up and then we're gonna use the longer sliced onions. These are gonna be used for the, it's gonna sit like a bed of onions with peppers on top of the fried fish. So yeah, this looking like it's quite good. So just be generous with a handful, go for it. Yeah. And then just break it down. And then we're just gonna, yeah, so just, once we see that it becomes a bit translucent, that's when we're gonna start adding the spices and stuff. Thank you, keeping an eye on my onion, very good. Mm -hmm. You can just put like two, three tablespoons of oil, and just, let's just get that. Yeah, that should be okay, actually. We just need to get down to a medium heat. Once it's hot, and then we get down to it, and then we always go skin side down first, yeah? It takes two minutes, skin side, then we flip it, and you just put it away from you, so when you put it down, just away, and that's it. So literally, that's gonna fry for two minutes. This is the for the warm mackerel salad. Uh, just literally take it to the other side. Right, in the meantime, with a touch of garlic, we're gonna get some uh, red pepper. Today we were 
uh, we're making three uh, mackerel in three ways. So we made it into fried rice, uh, little fish cakes, and just one piece of uh, fried mackerel served on onion masala. And the chef's being really nice. He's um, he's explaining everything to me step by step. Uh, telling me all the stuff that could possibly happen, like if you don't focus on it. Um, yeah, he's been really helpful. That looked really, really enjoyable. I, the students looked like they really enjoyed the cooking process. I have a contestant two here with me, Jalal Saeed of Taj Tandoori. Welcome. Assalamu alaikum. Alaykum You have two minutes to tell us about your recipe and cooking method. Yeah, so I think I uh, just want to say Assalamu alaikum everyone. Uh, one of our main goals of uh, actually making this dish was to really bring Bangladeshi cooking to the forefront. And, uh, you know, there's so many Bangladeshi owners and we don't celebrate our own cooking as much and you know we decided to use fish because there's not a house that you'd go without a, to a dawah that you wouldn't have a fish there so and uh, so that's why is the that that we decided and uh, I also wanted to incorporate as many cooking methods as possible onto a plate so that's why it was the mackerel three ways that we chose and that's how we came up with the bazi which was like the mackerel chutney in a salad and then there was the fish cake the bora and the pan fried fish so we can use as much of the techniques that we use in the house and just show that off but along with it we had like the traditional khatta which you have which is the tomato soup and a bit of the uh, the moshla the uh, caramelized onions for the dish and we use like some british ingredients with it to give it a bit of a modern twist so we had like a rhubarb puree and some dill and we decided to use mackerel as well so that kind of gave like a mix of the two cultures which is basically what me and my brother are we're like british bangladeshis and we just wanted a bit of us on the plate so this is uh, why we decided to do that and um, yeah another thing that we had to consider when we were doing it is the ease of the cooking service because obviously on a busy Friday Saturday night how to get that on a plate as quickly as possible so we had a lot of things that we could prep beforehand like the mash and the fish cakes could be had so you just dip it into the fryer and like even the the pan fried fish it literally takes two minutes on one side and then you just another minute on the other side and again once the uh, chutney for the mackerel is ready you just have to stir fry it with some cooked rice so you, the plating of it actually is only takes a, around five minutes once it's all cooked so you know that's something that we had to envisage as well and yeah so we tried with the plate also to have as many different textures so we used like these props like we had like the uh the can that for the for the tomato soup and then we had this little tin that was sealed the mackerel fish and then you could kind of like open it up and then you find the fish cake so it kind of gave it a bit of a unique presentation on the plate and made it look a bit cool so everyone can like yeah. get out there yeah. cameras and do some Instagram. Hey, Jalal, but yeah, I'll... your time's up. Okay, I'll <laughs> shut up now. <laughs> yeah, thank, thank you. you. That was thank very you. descriptive. Yeah. We'll hear a little bit from you later on. Thank, thank you. you. Now we have the next video. Let's see how Kasundi scallops have been cooked. I'm going to use here like a steamed broccoli with uh, Kasundi. It's a Bengal Indian based master sauce and caviar. So the ingredients, the color, texture, presentation is going very well. So I'm very happy of this cooking uh, classes with my students. Today I'm going to cook a kasundi scallop with steamed broccoli. So first I'm going to add the masala, kasundi scallop masala, with two teaspoon of, a teaspoon of oil. Medium hot, okay? Yeah. In the meantime, the water is boiling. boiling. So we need to cook the, the broccoli yeah. for two, three minutes. I'm going to add some chopped ginger, some garlic. The chopped garlic and chopped ginger should be half brown. In the meantime, I put red onion. Yeah, yeah please, please, yeah. You can make it uh, five to six pieces. In the meantime, I put some uh, turmeric powder here. Yeah. Turmeric powder will be giving a nice color. The mustard seeds, yellow mustard seeds, and overnight I soak it. Soak because it's very dry. See, it's almost half brown. Now I'm going to put all this mustard seeds, almost 100 grams. In the meantime, I'm going to do some pink pepper. Uh, why do you use pink pepper? Pink pepper is more flavorful and more healthy. And it looks more colorful. colorful. See, yeah. 
de sea salt. In the meantime, I put some green chili, ruby, okay. green chili. And we are in UK, we should not put more green chili. Because they think it's going to be too powerful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, maybe five to ten minutes. Last night I soaked it, now it's very soft. And before that, I put some roasted whole garam masala powder. It's, it's a combined of cinnamon, cardamom, dry ginger powder. Everything is mixed, almost eight to nine uh, roasted masala powder here. Again, the roasted cumin powder. It's our Indian food. Cumin flavor is almost maximum food we're using cumin. Cumin. Yeah. Again, I put some water and keep it here. And can you blend it with some yogurt? One teaspoon of yogurt. Yeah. yeah. Please. And in the meantime, I grill the scallop. Thank you. Can you put some salt? Can you bring the broccoli yeah. and uh, this one? See, again, it's a Indian food yeah. with a global plate. So I'm going to add some chopped ginger, okay. garlic, and onion. This is some yogurt with some salt and pepper. Yeah. Why did you put caviar? Caviar should be a cold item for color combination. It's like a color of Indian food Indian. everywhere. Yeah. And the cherry tomato. It's curry leaves for garnish. We are in modern Indian cuisine. This is microgreens again. Some black sesame seeds okay. toasted. It's not raw, all right? Awesome. And finally, I put some pink pepper. Okay. This is Kasundi scallop. It was a very nice experience. This is the first time I'm trying this dish. Uh, it's not very spicy because usually I don't, I don't eat spicy food, but with this dish, it's very nice. It's very nice. Yeah. The scallop is cooked perfectly. Yeah. It's got a nice bounce to it. It's still moist, tender. We use from the basic uh, things, like the, the spicy, uh, it's uh, roasted, very colorful like a green with the uh, broccoli we use, the yellow uh, turmeric, the cumin seeds, the pepper, which is, uh, uh, this is the first time I see the uh, pink pepper. Uh, the taste is very nice and um, definitely I will, I will try this one. And it's very nice experience with the chef also. Well, that was um, fantastic to hear, especially the students and the judges looked like they were enjoying um, the dish. I have Tadril Shalim of Viceroy of Windsor. Tadril, you have two minutes to tell us about your recipe and cooking method. Thank you very much. Thank you all for having me back. Salaam alaikum. Yes. Um, I guess I can start with the spirit and the reasoning behind the dish. We try to give our chefs a lot of kind of freedom and creativity to really bring their whole selves into work. And the inspiration for the Kasundi scallops was really bringing East and West Bengal together, but with that balance of the modern twist, and that's where the scallops come in. In terms of the preparation, as we can see, it's quite easy. Like the ingredients itself, you can source everywhere. It's all UK sourced except the scallops, but that could be changing with kind of fishery policies. It's usually from the States, but we can now start bringing that in from the UK, in particularly Scotland. And the rest of the ingredients, besides the caviar, fair enough, are very simple, easy to access. But what I really want to talk about is the kasindi sauce itself, that special gravy. So while everything else can be prepped in around 10, 15 minutes, scallops itself take around four minutes to cook, that sauce has the mustard seeds that's marinated overnight. If you go to any South Asian restaurant, you'll always have mustard seeds marinating. So at that point, we, it's not too much of an issue to prepare. It is that issue. Friday, Saturday night, we need to get this dish out into the restaurant. And so what we do is the sauce is prepared when we know it's getting ordered. And then when we do the tandoori mix grill and the other tandoori foods, we get the scallops, cook them for three and four minutes and get them onto the plate as soon as we can. Because what we want when we get people, the customers with the dish, we want them to see the scallops piping hot because that's how they're supposed to be eaten. And the history and the inspiration of the dish, we really wanted to bring that color out. When you get an experience of a South Asian restaurant, you want that rich, vibrant colors. And it's hard to modernize tradition with what people want in the 21st century. And we try to create that balance between the two with the sauce itself. And when I say it hits 
all four of your taste buds. It's smooth, it's flavorful, it really packs a punch and brings the whole experience to the meal itself. Do I need to say anything else? No, I'm going to end this 10 seconds early. Thank you very oh, much. Brilliant, Tachibere, thank you so much. Thank you, you may sit down. That was fantastic, and within the two minutes, next we're going to see how king prawn azuba is being cooked. We cooked the uh, king prawn azuba today, um, and it's a traditional dish. We've made it into a modern twist where we've used less of the traditional ingredients, more of the modern techniques, and less, um, more spices. Um, and Tina actually did most of the cooking for us, one of the, contest uh, one of the contestants here, um, and she did a really good job. She knew, um, she followed the instructions really well. She cooked uh, the, the king prawns and uh, she marinated the dish really well. So it was a it's simple ingredients, but you make it unique with the way you cook the dish as well. So that's what she's done really well in that sense. something that I've really been interested in you know so it was good to kind of like see how the spices work together and how the flavors come together it was really fun it was excellent to work with so so far so good really good Another exciting um, video um, cooking of king prawn azuba. I have Saeed Sharul Alam of India India Witten. Please describe your dish, recipe, and cooking method. You have two minutes, Sharul. Thank you. Salam alaikum, everyone. Um, so, the recipe itself. Um, originated from my dad's restaurant and my dad being a chef as well himself. Um, he's my inspiration, and what I've done is it, it used to be an authentic, traditional dish, but I've taken that and put a modern twist to it. So what I've done to the dish, and um, as you could see, my dad um, making the dish himself is um, taking the sauce and the king prawn, separated it. Um, so you've got, we. what we do at first is pan fry the king prawns on the shell first um, with a little bit of salt and black pepper, which um, 
keeps the nutrients and the flavor of the king prawn um, and also the benefits of the king prawn. Um, and we leave that aside. Then we go on to make the sauce of the dish. Um, we're using very simple ingredients, um, fresh produce of tomatoes, green peppers, uh, red peppers. Um, it was a simple dish with simple ingredients, um, but the flavors are, it makes it a complex flavor on the taste buds. And this dish, even though it's um, a traditional dish that's been modernized, you're able to replicate it in the restaurant during the busy periods. It's a simple dish that you can make within um, seven to 10 minutes when orders are coming in, you're able to make that dish and also make it to a high quality as well. Um, and as you can see from uh, one of the, uh, um, from Tina, she, when she created the dish, she made the dish herself with the guidance of my dad. So it, it just shows how easy it is to make that dish. Um, it's a simple dish, exquisite, and also um, a, f a flavor of some dish that's, uh, that can be replicated anywhere. And I think any restaurant will be able to make that dish. Yeah. Um, sorry. And coming back to like the Kim prawns, it's a high protein dish, which is nutritionally beneficial. It's light. It's healthy that the newer generation want as well. They want healthy dish. They want something that looks good. Um, that's why we've got like the Kim prawns and then you've got the sauce. Thank you, Sharon. So you can add the sauce. Thank you it. so much. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Very descriptive Thank you. again. Uh, you. And um, I think it's making everyone hungry now seeing all these dishes, <laughs> yeah. um, the lovely dishes so far. Now, we're going to go straight on to our next video. Let's see how railway duck has been cooked. It's called uh, railway duck. So I'm very happy to teach uh, Paul today. He's very confident. I've shown him all the way, all the process, how we did it. Railway duck, yeah. So first you're going to marinate. The duck is there. We're going to add one teaspoon of uh, garlic ginger paste. Okay. That's it. Now two spoon of yogurt. One spoon of the turmeric powder. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. No problem. Put half a spoon chili powder. That's it. Just put one spoon of the zira powder. One spoon of the mixed powder. Yeah. And then we go salt there. Yeah. And then now we got some oil there, just avocado oil. You put two spoon there. And we're gonna add some lemon juice. Yeah, that will do. You may want to, it's up to you if you wanna use some of the coriander. Yeah. Yeah. While I get the pan ready, yeah. Mix it well, mix it well. Usually, leave it for a couple of hours, yeah? yeah. So that all the spices goes inside and marinated properly, yeah? And now, one of these put there. Slowly, slowly, be careful, yeah? I think, I think put another one on the side. We're gonna wait for the pan to heat it up, yeah? Now put the, them to there, yeah? Uh, it's gonna take, I think, about 15, 20 minutes. Let's see if we can do it upside down. One second, I'm just gonna do one. When you turn something upside down, you try to do it that way. So in case it's not gonna you drip into you. Back. Yeah, it's flash back. Yeah, turn it upside down. Yeah, that's it. One. This one. Yeah. Add some coriander. Put some of this coriander here as well.
The chef has shown me that the railway duck is a simple recipe to make. Um, it's from start to finish. The railway duck has been an easy step from start to finish. It's still very tender, yeah. and that's obviously because you've marinated for so long. It's very nice. Yeah. Mm. Very nice. It's simple, but it's very nice. interesting method of cooking railway duck. I have Shahriar Udin of Panchi Indian Street Kitchen here. You have two minutes to tell us about your recipe and cooking method. Asalaamu As Alaikum everyone. Um, so the dish itself is a very simple dish to cook. As, as you can see um, during the footage, uh, we had our student Paul cook um, the dish throughout. What we want to do is give him the experience uh, to be in a live kitchen, uh, which he thoroughly enjoyed and uh, took, took the experience. Um, the reason why we chose duck is when you go into a, a, ta uh, a normal Indian takeaway or restaurant, most of the times you'll find it's either uh, chicken, uh, lamb, lamb tikka, chicken tikka on the menu. What we want to do is use a different source of protein, which we would make, would, which would make us stand out from the crowd. Um, but it had to be sustainable and it had to fit the business model. During a fast-paced service, we need to have something that we can cook to a high-level standard, uh, which we can sell to the customers at a reasonable price and, end of the day, as a business, generate profit. Um, and the duck fit the criteria for us. The way we marinated, again, we didn't want to complicate anything. We wanted to keep it simple but have flavours that were um, tantalising and that you could follow through when um, eating the dish. Very simple way of man marinating, which Paul, the student, carried out. Um, it was served with salad, again, a very simple dish, but the dressing uh, was out of our own, um, and we had a sauce, a fusion chutney sauce, again, very simple sauce to make, um, which accompanied the, the, the dish. Um, yeah, it was, it was, overall, it was a great experience. Um, it's, it was something different for us, uh, which we enjoyed putting together, and, the, and Paul enjoyed creating, and the judges uh, enjoyed on the day. And we have our final video to watch and let's see how the chicken satay was cooked. Here we have uh, the Mardi Lounge chicken satay, Indo-Chinese fusion. Today I've been working with Jade, she's been absolutely excellent in helping me to create this dish. Uh, I don't think I could have done it without her. So Jade, we're going to just run through some of the ingredients that we're going to use to create the sauce. So here we've got uh, sweet chilli sauce, we've got fresh onion, spring onion, a bit of garden mince, soy sauce. We're going to use a bit of chilli powder because it needs a little bit of a kick on the chilli side. Mixed curry powder, we've got fresh tamarind, curry leaves, fresh garlic and fenugreek. Uh, and, and some fresh coriander there as well. So first of all what we need to do, uh, we're going to need to prepare the chicken. Fresh spring chicken, egg coated it, peri peri seasoned it and bread crumb. And what we're going to do and how to prepare the chicken, we're going to pan fry it. So we don't want it to be overcooked. We want the outer layer of the chicken to be nice and crispy. So we're going to go ahead and put some oil. We're going to use three tablespoons of oil. We want to make sure that's about medium hot. Whilst that's heating up, what we can do in the meantime is, if you want to grab the green runner beans and place it into the boil steaming water, uh, we're going to let that steam for about two to three minutes and then what we'll, get, what we'll do after is we'll drain it in the drainer. Now that the oil is nice and hot, we're going to place the chicken into the pan. We'll flip it once it's cooked on one side. Four to five minutes, but depends on your heat level. So I like to make sure it's nice and slow, not too quick, because it, it'll just be too crispy on the outside and chicken won't be cooked on the inside properly. So once that's been cooked, we can just leave that to a side. So we've got the green runner beans being slowly steamed, chicken slowly cooked. So what we can do now is prepare the sauce. Two tablespoons of oil. So if you sprinkle a little bit of fresh garlic in there, and we're gonna burn the garlic until it becomes like a nice browny color. I need a pinch of salt, please. Uh, a little bit of fenugreek, please. So you can see it's slowly becoming brown. So if you grab the onions. So what we need to add now is the peppers, please, and some curry leaves. That's it. Yeah, 
Right, so we're going to just have uh, about three, three or four. Now the reason why we add curry leaves, because this particular dish is like an Indo-Chinese fusion. Indian spices, but with the touch of the soy sauce and the sweet chili, it gives it that mixed fusion. So what we need to add now, mixed curry powder, just sprinkle it around. We need a bit more, because we're making two portions worth. If we go ahead with the uh, chili powder, please. That's it, perfect. All of it, please. Now the reason why we have to be a bit generous on the chili because we've got a little bit more sweet stuff going in later. Not too sour and not too sweet. So the secret to making sure that the spices burn is again low heat and we put the spices in first so they get nice aroma to it as well. So what we need to do now, puree please. Now I need you to be a bit generous on this one. Uh, we're just going to flip the chicken over again so it's nice and even on both sides. Add a bit of fenugreek on top, please. Just sprinkle around. If you want to sprinkle a little bit of fresh uh, spring onion, please. We're going to go with the garden mint. This was an amazing experience being able to make um, Indonesian plus Indian foods. All the flavours and the colour, everything on the palette is just perfect and learning how to make it. This dish helped inspire me make um, an Indonesian um, Indian fusion of different foods and flavours and added different kinds of elements to the dish. Wow, that was interesting and fusion cooking is definitely um, has been a hit with many. I have Abdul Mumit Zakaria of Mahdi Lounge. Please, you have 120 seconds and please tell us about your recipe and cooking method. Good evening everyone. So as you can see from the footage, um, it's very simple to create the chicken satay. Now, this particular dish consists of just three particular items, which are the chicken itself, fresh, locally produced green runner beans, and steamed rice. In order to prepare the chicken, you need approximately 10 minutes. And this is to peri peri season the chicken, and this is fresh spring chicken. Uh, we egg coat it, bread crumb, and then pan fry. So, when you're in a busy environment, especially on a Friday, Saturday night, you need unique dishes to be prepared within a decent amount of time. And this dish only consists of 15 minutes. 10 minutes to prepare the chicken, three minutes to cook the sauce, and two minutes to plate and present. My particular recipe, I have created from scratch myself. But within my team, it's a standardized recipe, so any team member can prepare this dish. The cost of produ producing this dish is £5.25 and I sell on my menu for £19.95. We like to ensure that we prepare in small portions and sell fresh. <coughs> With the chicken satay, we want to also ensure that the dish is colourful and we also use fresh salad. So in the footage, as you can see with the salad, I used cucumber and carrot to decorate and within that decoration is my own unique cabbage salad recipe as well. It's also very simple, touch of mustard oil, little bit of sea salt, and very thinly sliced cabbage. Uh, once upon um, presenting upon the customer, we ensure that we use dry ice to give it that gimmick and a nice, innovative, creative idea. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Abdul Mumit. Now, now that we've seen all the dishes and very tasty ones, it's, it's voting time. So while our special judges are voting, I'd like to ask our panel judges. Samad Bhai. Average, you know, on the whole, the whole presentation, yeah? Yeah, I'm, I'm impressed, you know. Um, innovative and also the presentation is very good. I wasn't present there to taste, but uh, the judges there on that day you know, highly recommended 
the taste of the uh, dishes prepared. Some of them, of course, I thought, uh, takes a little bit longer. Uh, and some of them takes an average time. So I think, you know, uh, on a Friday and Saturday night, we need to focus on the uh, timings. If it takes too long, then customers will feel bored and also other dishes will be delayed. Serving other dishes will be delayed. So uh, we'll just wait for the voting. And um, I'm sure, you know, Thank my colleagues you. have also made up their mind. Thank, okay. thank you so much, mate. Thank you. Julia, your feedback. Um, I, mean, I think I'm going to be doing a lot of mileage going around the country because the food <laughs> from everybody is so tasty. I feel a bit shortchanged, not having had a chance to taste everything. Um, but uh, there are a couple, couple in there that were particularly uh, to my fancy, I will say that. Uh, I think what I was really taken by, though, is the fact that everybody's really considered modern trends, you know, really sort of that whole uh, healthy food. A little, I've seen a little bit of avocado oil going on in there and, uh, and other ingredients which, are, you know, made them more conscientious and also I think considering the younger market as well um, because you know um, younger people are going to restaurants it's uh, not always the um, loyal sort of elders and old customers but these young crowd who seem to be visiting so I can see that there's been a lot of innovation a lot of thought put into these dishes so well done <laughs> thank you thank you Julia Shahagir thank your you. feedback I think the gone are the days of Madraj, Vindaloo, Dhanshak and Patia and these are the dishes that they just showcased. These are coming from Australia to Malaysia to Indonesia, all from all over the world. So these are now international dishes. And what they have shown to the students, I think one British poet is very wrong. And the poetry was, the East is East, the West is West, and the twine shall never meet. But I think now the East and the West will be met through the dishes. Wow. Wow, fantastic. Very well put. Very well said. I'd like to hear from our mentor, which we didn't earlier on, just briefly, Shahina. Your feedback, please. Yes, so there's plenty of creativity today. I think what's really important is to look at um, the way we can systemize the dishes, because in times of business, it's really important to try and, I think earlier was mentioned about not keeping other customers waiting, and also not keeping the customer bored as well, and um, so waiting for their own dish. Um, and also looking at the cooking techniques, um, how they retain the nutrients, um, and also the methods they're using in terms of whether it's an oven or flash fried or if it's deep fried, you know, they all make a difference to what the customer is going to pick up the menu. Um, and the newer generation, they are looking at more healthy alternatives now. And they're also looking at flavour as well. So we Thank you, Shahina. Sabir Karim, your feedback. General, I think uh, they demonstrated really uh, well equipped uh, food, modern, uh, modern uh, Bangladeshi Indian uh, cuisine at its best, um, including the the innovation, olive oil, sea salt, colors, uh, the, the greens, um, and, and the cooking method, you know, oh good. That's, that's I think, is phenomenal. It's, it's really, really nice. Uh, and um, it's, it's, it's exciting. Um, that's what we need in, in, in the catering industry, to have the young uh, dynamic chefs to introduce these cuisines to, because to, we, we are in the dining industry at the moment, the, the catering isn't doing great, and we really need chefs like themselves to bring up all these uh, brilliant dishes to excite the Indian cuisine again, the Bangladeshi cuisine again. Uh, well done to all of you. Thank you, Sabrika. But yes, um, indeed, creativity and innovation is the way ahead for the next generation. Ziara Chaudhry, your feedback. Yeah, I think uh, same again. I think uh, the innovation, I think the ease of training is so important because obviously the lack of staff and uh, crisis within the industry and what they showed today, I think uh, they can take anybody from any ethnic uh, background or any sort of, the, and create that dish with them. So I think that's that's the most highlighted thing I've got there is the dishes are beautiful and what they how they can train the dishes as well is absolutely amazing so well done guys yep thank you i'd like to speak to our special judges i'd like to ask aisha chowdhury so, 
every contestant was saying it's a very simple dish to prepare. And I was thinking, is it really, or is it because you are the expert, you are saying what you are saying? <laughs> um, but they all look really nice and, and uh, tasty. And I'm just wondering, how are we going to be marking them? I'm sure uh, if I am struggling, my colleagues will be struggling too. Um, previously, I remember asking one particular question um, several times, that how are you going to be attracting young generation, not only to be at this business, but also to have Indian food. But today, I think I have my answers, and I don't need to ask this uh, question any longer. So well done, everyone. Thank you. Abdul Kashim, just quick few words you're on your feedback. Obviously, we are in these challenging times. Um, we've, we've got to increase our pricing. Uh, costs are rising all the time. And to do that, uh, you need to come up with these sort of interesting and unusual dishes. And when you do, and you stand up, you know, stand uh, 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 apart from the crowd, you can charge extra. And, uh, and these guys have shown that what they've uh, produced are all different and unusual. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Abdul Kashim. Amina, your feedback. Well, all I can say, I'm hungry. <laughs> yes. uh, the food was amazing. All of them were lovely presented and they look scamptious and obviously delicious. So uh, made the best one win. And Minaj Kapia. Um, our food, in my opinion, is the best food in the world. I've been to a few countries in my life, but uh, I've never tasted anything better than our curries, our Bangladeshi curries. Not, I wouldn't say Indian, I'll say Bangladeshi, because most of the chefs uh, in the Indian restaurants are Bangladeshi. The owners are Bangladeshi. So, um, and now witnessing these young chefs, young people, smart, um, educated, articulate, to see them coming to uh, this restaurant trade and passionately making, cooking, yeah. preparing these innovative and creative dishes is actually has restored my faith uh, for the future of our catering industry. And uh, I'm sure we can only go forward and, and, and give better curries, better dishes uh, to the British public. And um, yeah, so I, uh, I would like to say that congratulations, Guy, well done, fantastic. I think this is absolutely wonderful what I've seen so far. And I'm sure these dishes uh, taste great as well. Thank you. Tafa Sumia, few words from yourself. Well, I think uh, everybody summed it up brilliantly, really, bringing confidence to our customers. Uh, these young people are coming up, and that's what Catering Circle is about, introducing, encouraging young people to come on board and, you know, business is tough, but there is money to be made. So I think viewers watching at home, you know, this industry was built from nothing and we can sustain if young people comes and look at these uh, contestants today. They are a role model and they've done an excellent job. Thank you. Hello. What I actually like to see from all of the inspiring chefs was the fact that um, they're using things like scallops, salmon, duck, which is very unusual. I think someone did mention before, we've always been uh, looking at traditional chicken, lamb, prawns, and we're actually moving away from that. So, so to start with, the basics of using the right ingredients is important also, because they're, they're all very young. Um, I think, you know, social media is very important to them. I think that's one of their key um, push, you know, it's pushing their business, but at the same time, they've kept their heritage, and that's really important. So they've actually, like, um, a lot of them actually said today, they've actually, um, introduced fusion food in terms of using different cuisines and actually trying to keep the cooking method very, very simple. And that's very, very good. There's a lot of potential in the future there. Thank you. No, definitely. Zia Chowdhury, I'd like to ask you, any tips for the next round? For the next round, I think uh, just stay confident. <laughs> Don't be uh, bedazzled by these uh, professional judges we have on the right. So, yeah, so uh, stay calm and confident, and I think you're doing a great job anyway. And we have the results. We have Kasundi Scollets, 82, Railway Duck, 82, Salmon and Calamari, 82, Mackerel Freeways, 80, Chicken satay, 74, and king prawn azuba, 74 as well. And now the combined results are mackerel freeways, 174, kasindi scallops, 169, salmon and calamari, 162, king prawn azuba, 151, chicken satay, 149, and finally railway duck, 144. So the top scorer is mackerel three ways congratulations 
Now, well, that was a very intense round and congratulations to the top scorer. Now, let's swiftly go on to round three for market trends. We're going to talk about market trends and I'd like to call Jashim Hussein. Please tell us about market trends. So consumers are looking for three things, something healthy, unique and value for money. As a business, I consider two things is competitors and the cost of living. So our ingredients, the aspect of smoking and the low budget to cost enables all of these. The trend now, yes, it's the gym goers and healthy eating yet. Yeah. People eat with their eyes first. So it has to catch on to those hashtags, have a strong USP so the Instagrammers will push and share that. Presentation needs to display a balanced diet and nutrients. Um, Meat-free diet has evolved amongst the millennials who seem to have a lot of money to spend eating out now. Um, as much as the market trend, uh, we have to consider financial trend as well. Um, so be wise with the costing. Uh, consider the items that we're using, if it's sustainable if the farming is labor intensive or not, because that will have a direct correlation to your buying power. And then the source of availability. This will all aid in providing value for money for the end consumer. Target market has to be identified. And I think the biggest trend at the moment is convenience. People order food home. So the dish has to be suitable um, for takeaway and delivery packaging. Um, Jashim, I'd like to finish your sentence very quickly. Still another minute left. Um, it's one minute. A one minute round? Yes, 60 seconds. Okay, so the delivery packaging, it has to be, you know, um, suitable for that and maintain its quality. So it should be easy to make. And then when you talk about, on the flip side of it, the environmentally friendly side is a worldwide trend. So uh, biodegradable materials and recyclable materials should be used. We use wooden forks and... Um, cutleries and the boxes are recyclable. Am I out of time? Yes, thank you very much. Thank you, very informative. Can I have Jalal Saeed? So to use a mackerel as uh, the dish, it's a very versatile uh, protein and we can also, um, it's sustainable, it's quite a healthy dish and it was locally sourced and readily available. And um, also mackerel is a dish that you don't see on, much on the menus and also it's also a dish that is very cost effective. So we're able to, you know, in this sort of energy crisis economy, we were able to get a dish that was giving us a really high GP. I think it was like 84.27% gross profit that we had on it. And um, our dish was like, it was designed in such a way that like Indian street food is something that's like up and coming and very popular. And it's something that we kind of designed our dish in that way so that it's a, appealing to the younger generation. They're kind of coming in and they're looking for something that's really unique. And this is the sort of uh, market trend, but it also kind of appeals to the older generation as well, because they're beginning to see things that they've never seen before and they come and they try different dishes. And yeah, and again, with the actual plating of the dish, like the way we done it, it was, it was, you know, using the props and having people to actually play about and use the things. It made it very much something that you can quickly snap and put on Instagram and say, oh, look at this cool dish. And that, that was a very important thing that we wanted to have something that no one's ever seen before and a very unique thing that you can um, present as well as giving the taste and having all the heritage and having all the Bangladeshi taste that people get to experience, but in a, in a really fun and creative and innovative way so yeah thank so you Jalal yeah, thank you so I'm, much uh, I know it's fun. very tight yeah, squeeze yeah, to get everything in <laughs> next Tajwir Shalim and you have 60 seconds so, yeah so um, where to begin uh, in terms of the food itself we tried to eliminate carbs from the dish we wanted to keep that up to the customer's choice so we kept it high in protein with the scallops high in fiber with the broccoli and the sauce itself low fat lots of vitamins very good healthy alternative to a lot of modern eating habits. In terms of the food itself, I wanted to make a twist from modern and traditional, kind of bringing it together with rich, vibrant colors. What the Instagram generation, as one of them want to see, is something that we can take pictures of. But for me personally, when you do take pictures, you don't really, the food doesn't match what it looks like. 
I didn't want that for my restaurant. If I want you to come into my restaurant and enjoy my food, you're staying, you're coming back the next time. And that's something imperative because 80% of your profit is always 20% of your customers. And if you lose your customers, you lose your, your day ones, you're going to start losing revenue and that's not a successful business model. In terms of how I deal with it with my staff, all of my staff taste the food when my chefs want to create or try something differently and so that they're invested and they have buy-in for the food itself that they can really enjoy and have that Windsor experience for everyone. Thank you, uh -huh. Tajiri. Just on the last second, thank you so much. Thanks. Next, can I have Saeed Shahrul Alam? And your 60 seconds starts now. Um, so, yeah, with our dish, um, like the main emphasis is on the Kimpron itself um, for it to be um, the nutrients it's got, the health benefits it's got, and also the way of it's cooked. Um, it's visually uh, appetizing, and also the way that I've marketed is through my customers. They'll take the pictures, they'll put it on their socials, and also whilst they're doing it, they, they take the picture live while they're at the restaurant, um, and they'll snap it onto their Snapchat and Instagram, and that promotes our restaurant by simply word of mouth. And because it's a local community, we get the local customers, drive the local um, revenue in. Um, and also the cooking method, it's, uh, it's a dish that's made with simple ingredients that can be substituted if the ingredients aren't available. Um, and that's what makes it cost effective as well. Also, it's the, the, the wow factor of like the keen prawns and also the tomatoes and the peppers that are cooked with it gives it a zengi flavor to the dish as well. Thank you, Shahril. Next, can I have Shahri Arudin? And you have 60 seconds. Uh, when looking at market trend, as, as we mentioned, we wanted to move away from the stigma attached to the Indian curry industry of chicken, lamb, um, prawns, etc. We wanted to be different. Uh, so that's one of the main reasons why we went for duck. Um, as we all touched upon, um, our industry needs energy. It needs, uh, it needs to be changed. Um, and we need the younger generation to... Uh, for, from my, our perspective, to come into the industry and we need a um, new generation of customers. How do we do that? We need to be different. Uh, all the kids, you've, they've probably grown up with their parents having kormas and masalas, but when, they've, when they go to eat, they're probably getting bored of kormas and masalas and the standard uh, dishes. So that's why we need to be um, innovative and we need to have these creative dishes on our menu. Because for our industry to survive, we need the younger generation to come in or we're, we're at a lost cause. Um, how do you get to the younger generations? Social media, plain and simple. Um, when we were at the college, we did uh, Instagram Live, Facebook Live. Instantly, we just saw within that, within a minute of starting, everyone gets a ping on their phone, Panji is live. We were Thank at you. about a thousand Thank viewers. You. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. It's a very quick 60 seconds. And finally, Abdul Mumit Jakaria. You have 60 seconds. Um, so in terms of my marketing trends, I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm trying to promote in-house marketing, so I'll get my staff to promote the dish. Uh, I'm using locally sourced organic uh, fresh runner beans, which promotes healthy eating. The way I attract yet the younger generation is through social media platforms. Um, before I created this particular dish from scratch, I used the three Ps. Um, marketing strategy, which is the product, place, and price. So how I d identified to use chicken was by using my EPOS system, which showed which particular product was the most popular. That's that's why I went for chicken. Um, a place like a small town, uh, uh, my village, Rye, where I'm based, uh, and the price at 1995 gives me a 14 pound profit margin. Um, so overall, these are the techniques that I use to get my marketing and how I promote this particular dish. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Abdul Mumit. Thank you. Thank you to all the all our contestants. Right in this round, the voting's already starting. The panel judges get 20% of the votes, and the special judges 5%. I want to put one of our judges on the special judges on the spot. Aisha Chowdhury, after hearing about market trends from all the um, contestants, what are your thoughts? Um, especially the technology they have been using um, is, is really good, especially to attract young generation. And it's impressive, I would say. So a huge well done. Halal Malik. It's really, really tough. And um, I myself have, have been in this trade for over 30 years myself. Um, I was a second generation, but this is the third generation 
and even myself, I've got a, a lot to learn from these guys. I think one thing that is very, very um, interesting is plate presentation is very, very important. I think there's a lot of emphasis there on plate presentation. And like um, the young man said, Instagram, TikTok, when he went live, straight away he had a thousand, you know, people straight away, they switched on. I think the important thing is that, yes, I think, like someone said before, you know, the eye is the beholder. It's important that we actually look at visuals, look how we can use colour, how we can use spices, and actually just put a twist to what we actually serve on the plate. It makes a big difference. Yes, and with the flavours as well, as well as market trends, we can see it, it is um, Instagrammable, it needs to be Instagrammable and pleasing, as well as how I think now the generation, even the older generation, are becoming more health conscious. So going out and dining. Yeah, I think what you just said be. there, I, I, if I could just add on, I think, I mean, these, no. these guys here today, they're actually a prime example of no. the generation gap that we've got within our industry. And um, I think, and you guys, you know, my hat's come off to you. You've actually, you're filling that gap between the generation gap between what we've got our forefathers and what you guys are doing right now. So well done, guys. Tough us all, yeah. Marketing is very important to any business because... If you don't market your product, if you have a fantastic product, great product, but if you don't market it, it's not going to work. So uh, currently, the social media platform you cannot ignore because photogenic, uh, presentable mm -hmm. food, ambience, and the experience really gives it all to spread the message to your customers. And I think these young uh, entrepreneurs have shown... Uh, what they do is what everybody uh, should take tips and follow up. Thank you. I think, uh, like Tofu Zulbai and Helal Bai, I think uh, presentation, plating, and I think senses and flavors, like what all of the guys are using in terms of the smells, the taste, the textures, and uh, you can see all of that on a plate that they've all done very well. Thank you, Zero Chodi. We've got the results. I think behind all of the um, um, feedback, we were, <laughs> the voting's been continuing. Number one is Kasundi Scallops, 86. Mackerel Three Ways, 82. Railway Duck, 80. Salmon and Calamari, 80. King Prawn Azuba, 76. And Chicken Satay, 74. Well done to Kasundi Scallops. Congratulations. And now we have the combined results. Mackerel three ways, 256. Kasundi scallops, 255. Salmon and calamari, 242. King prawn azuba, 227. Railway duck, 224. And chicken satay, 223. Well done. Wasn't that a fantastic, very intense round? with some amazing dishes. I just want to thank everyone that attended, but I think we need to congratulate our finalists. Yeah. Congratulations, massive congratulations. First place, Mackerel Three Ways, Jalal Saeed from Taj Tandoori, congratulations. Second, we have Kasundi Scallops, Tadru Shalim from Viceroy of Windsor. And in third place, Salmon and Calamari, Joshim Hussein from Shoreditch Fish and Chips. You know what, well done. Massive congratulations for all of, all of us. Jalal, I'd like to ask you your thoughts, your final thoughts. Yeah, this has been great. I just wanted to say, that, I mean, like, uh, like four weeks ago, I lost my mother. And oh, this, wow. this dish, oh, actually, <laughs> I cooked with her and I, we created it together. So it's very close to my Sorry. <laughs> I'd like to speak to Jalal's mentor. How are you feeling? Um, I'm feeling quite emotional as well, actually, because uh, it's it was very difficult for him to come here today and do this, and es especially last week as well. So just to be here is, is you know, done, done Thank so you. well. Okay. Thank you, Zero Chaudhry. Thank you so much. Tadru Shalim, how are you feeling? Hopeful, renewed. There's a lot of great individuals in this room, and the sector is in a lot of issues right now but i think we're on the right path to getting to where we need to be and i'm excited to see where that is thank you
Uh, I, I think, How are you uh, feeling? I, I'm feeling over the moon, uh, but uh, I'm feeling a bit sad because just by one point, Jalal by one, <laughs> we stayed top. I want to make him laugh because, uh, by the way, I'm very sorry that you you lost your mom, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give Sasi a place in Jannah. Amen. And hats off to you, brother, going through all this trouble, and you're coming in and playing a massive part for the industry, not only for yourself and your restaurant, but for the industry as a whole. So we're very hopeful, well done, and I just want to say commiseration uh, to the um, uh, bottom three, not losers, your winners. You've been through the journey, and I'm sure you learn so much that you can use it for your business, your marketing, your uh, menu, and everything that you take it will uh, make you a better entrepreneur and a businessman. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you Tafa Zumiya. Joshim, a few yeah. words from you. Yeah, it's the battle of the fishes, isn't it? Um, yeah, it's been amazing. Thank you to everyone. And, you know, I'm so proud of this brother here. I only met him like three, four weeks ago, but the amount of love I have for him is crazy. He cooked next to me and it was... Uh, yeah, man, inshallah, you, you win it, inshallah. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Joshin, thank you so much. And Halal Malik, how are you feeling? Uh, well, I'm very proud of everybody here today. I think it's about feeling inspired. Um, uh, especially, it's nice to see Fish, all three of our, of our you know, going through to the finals are all Fish contestants. That's, that's remarkable. And I think more than anything else, I think there's an old saying, um, there's big ships and there's small ships, but there's no ship like friendship. And these guys here, they've made, I've seen them behind the scenes and they've actually made great friendships. And that's, that's what the industry is about. It's about bringing people together. So well done, guys, and good luck. Well, wasn't that a heated round for all of us, wasn't it, judges? Judges, mentors, I know it was for me. And behind the scenes, all the, you know what? It's fun, it's actually really fun. And I want to thank all our panel judges for attending this episode. I want to thank our special judges. Thank you so much. And I want to thank our amazing mentors and Shahina, who couldn't join us in the studio, but she's joined us via Zoom. And yes, I want to thank the viewers for joining us and this. Now the next one are the finals and it will be taking place on the 15th of November. So stay tuned for the next episode. Thank you.